And I'm not denigrating the sport in any stretch of imagination. If I got one thing that I could eliminate from baseball, it would be intentional walks. You get paid for a reason. You don't get to intentionally walk anybody. Man up. If you a pitcher and you getting paid seven figures, I'm sorry. I don't give a damn if it's Bryce Harper or Stephen A. Smith at the plate. Strike me out or get me out. No intentional walks. And let's not take three minutes to throw a pitch. Let's put a clock on that bad boy. Let's do what we got to do. But I'm telling y'all. It's just something that needed to be said. I had to get it off my chest. I'm just looking at these big numbers. And I'm saying, oh, my God. 400-plus million for Mike Trout, 300-plus million for both Machado and Bryce Harper. And you seeing the averages, and particularly with Harper and Machado. And there's nobody to really market the sport for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is bad. You can slice it any way you want to. I'm telling you right now, it is not good. It is not good at all. It is not good for the sport. It's bad. And the reason why I bring that up is because juxtapose that to the NBA. Baseball, baseball, as far as I'm concerned, is dying a slow death before our very eyes. The NBA is thriving. The NBA is thriving. We're talking about three game sevens. And the one series that's over, I'm talking about a potential of three game sevens. You're already locked in two. I'm, I'm assuming there will be one after tonight with, in Houston. But the one series that's been locked up, you still got storylines of breathing out of that. Pick your poison. The Greek freak in Milwaukee. The Greek freak is taking over. He's taking over. The Greek freak. Giannis Antetokounmpo. This brother's on another level. Milwaukee, the small market that is Milwaukee, you are excited about basketball there. And oh, by the way, Greek Freak, his, his skill set, his tenacity, his fire, the fact that he ain't trying to be friends with opponents, and all of a sudden, it's like a breath of fresh air. You ain't even thinking about Chicago. It's one of the top three, top four markets in the United States of America. You're not even thinking about that when it comes to basketball. Even when we talk about the lottery and the potential of Zion Williamson being the number one overall pick for somebody, ain't nobody talking about Chicago. They talking about New York. They talking about Cleveland because that's where LeBron used to be. And some, for some reason, people bring up Zion's name when it comes to LeBron. Nobody think about Chicago. And that's not to say they couldn't end up getting the number one overall pick, but nobody's thinking about Chicago. Nobody. So I'm just saying to y'all, I look at the NBA right now. And then, of course, we got to take those storylines out of Boston. Marcus Smart speaking up on behalf of Kyrie yesterday, wondering what Kyrie is going to do, whether or not Boston wants to keep him, whether or not they will be able to keep him because he's a free agent. All of this other stuff is going on. But with all of that being said, still in all, as we sit here and we look at things, the NBA is thriving. We cannot say the same about Major League Baseball. Bryce Harper's Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim are 17 and 20 and in fourth place in the American League West. Philadelphia is in first place in the National League East, but Bryce Harper hasn't looked great lately. And then you got the San Diego Padres. They're four games over 500, just a game out, but in third place in the NL West. But are we really caring? No. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Throw that out there. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. The other thing I want to get into, get back into these NBA playoffs. Now that I got all of that off my chest. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I sit here before you in Houston, Texas, just a couple of miles away from the Toyota Center, site of tonight's Game 6, Western Conference Semifinals. Houston Rockets versus the Golden State Warriors. I sit here before you at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, to inform you of a fact that is undeniable. This is a legacy moment for James Harden and CP3. I personally am a bit compromised here because I'm always going to be, or I always try to be objective in my analysis and my evaluation. I call it like I see it and let the chips fall where they may. But I'll openly confess to you that I'm a bit emotional when it comes to this particular situation. 
on one hand, I got a lot of love and respect for the Golden State Warriors. The owners and Peter Goober and Joe Lacob, love them. Bob Myers is one of my favorite people. He's the GM. Steve Kerr is one of the classiest individuals this game has ever seen. He's a good man and a hell of a coach. And I love the players. Steph Curry's the greatest shooter I've ever seen. And I thank him for revitalizing the game of basketball in such a way that he's gotten kids away from trying to dunk all the damn time. And now the art of shooting is in vogue more than ever before. I think Klay Thompson is one of the more underappreciated stars in the game of basketball. I know he hasn't looked that way a few games in this series, and I understand that. But I'm talking about as a shooter. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Klay Thompson is one of the top five shooters in the history of basketball. He's just that gifted, and he's underappreciated, flagrantly so. Draymond Green, if I could have a, a, a brother in the NBA, it would be him. I love this man. I love his tenacity. I love his honesty, his candor. I don't like his emotions all the time, but at least they're real and authentic and they ain't fake. I love Draymond. I love Draymond. I say all of that to say I don't root against the Golden State Warriors. I'm thankful for what they've meant to the game of basketball over the last few years. They've been box office. Just like I love LeBron with C, uh, with, with D-Wade and Chris Bosh. And, of course, I'm eternally grateful for the time they gave me those four years at South Beach. It was just a beautiful moment in my life. What can I say? But having said all of that, I got a lot of love for James Harden, too. And this is truly, truly one of the great talents this game has ever seen, one of the greatest one-on-one -on -one players we've ever seen, one of the greatest one-on-one -on -one offensive juggernauts this game has ever seen. I think that he is somebody I'm starving for him to get his just due, his just recognition. And CP3, regardless of his temperament from time to time, he's a man, he's a good, good dude, a family guy, a great player, in his heyday, all of these things, and, 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 and a testament to greatness to be that miniature guard, and just a class individual, very big in the family, very intelligent, very accomplished, um, very philanthropic in a lot of different ways. I would know with what he's done in the city of Winston-Salem for my university and various other players starring at Wake Forest. Chris Paul is something special as a person, not just a basketball player. But I bring all of that up to say to you, that don't mean a damn thing right now to basketball fans. What means something to basketball fans is that James Harden and Chris, Chris Paul, CP3, step up and handle their business. This is their moment. And if they blow this, ladies and gentlemen, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't know if their reputations will ever recover if they lose this series to Golden State now that Kevin Durant has gone down. Now, Kevin Durant, shockingly to me, and I want to state for the record, they've labeled it a calf injury. It's a calf strain, and I totally understand that. And if that is true, I'm thankful. I personally think somebody lying to me because when I saw Kevin Durant grab his leg, he looked right at his Achilles. And every Achilles injury I've seen has gone like that where a guy snapped back and looks back at somebody thinking somebody kicked him. That's how Kevin Durant's initial reaction was. I still find it hard to believe it's just a calf strain. I still believe in the back of my mind that somehow, somewhere in a week or two from now, I'm going to hear that Kevin Durant, it was really his Achilles, and he's out. That's what I personally believe. And as an aside, jumping off the subject of this game for a second, let me say this. If Kevin Durant, we would have learned that Kevin Durant had to sit out the entire damn season, I would still give him the max deal. If I knew that Kevin Durant couldn't play the entire 2019-2020 season next year, I would still give him the max. He's that great. He's that great. I would give him the max and wait for him to come back a year after. And I wouldn't blink. I would pay him, I'd guarantee every penny, and I'd say, see you in 18 months. I don't give a damn. He's that great. That's how sure I am about Kevin Durant. 
And we've been hearing a lot of stuff about him leaving Golden State and going to New York. It's true. Ladies and gentlemen, from everything that I've heard, it's about a 95% possibility him and Kyrie going to New York City. Ain't 100%. Because if you know anything about Kevin Durant's temperament, ain't 100%. But it's pretty, done, it's pretty close to done. And I don't want to hear about Kyrie staying in Boston. He ain't staying in Boston. Stop that nonsense. He's out. He ain't staying in Boston. You might, be people, you might see people trying to get him to Brooklyn. But I'll tell you right now, the only reason Kyrie should go to Brooklyn is if he goes with KD or somebody. If he's going alone, he should take his behind right to New York and the Garden. Because the Brooklyn Nets are fine without him. Having said all of that, getting back to this game, I'm going to say it again. This is a legacy moment for James Harden and CP3. Here's why, ladies and gentlemen. What have we been hearing from Houstonians, from Rockets fans everywhere over the last year? Oh, CP3 went down. If CP3 didn't go down in game five, you know, with the groin injury, man, please, come on, y'all. They would have won the chip. Because I believe they would have beat Cleveland. They probably would have beat Cleveland the way they were rolling last year. And when you combine that with the fact that again, we have a situation where CP3 was hurt, y'all go down. Well, now we fast forward to this year. CP3's healthy. James Harden is balling. PJ Tucker's balling. There's no Trevor Ariza there who I believe is missed, but Clint Capella's still there. Austin Rivers come off the bench, does some good things. Eric Gordon has really stepped up his game. What possible excuse do you have? Kevin Durant's not there. Golden State Warriors are older. Andre Iguodala's older. He's not the same. Sean Livingston is older. He's not the same. Andrew Bogut is older and just came up from down under. He's only good to go against opposing bigs. He ain't good for a series like this. Boogie Cousins got the Achilles injury. He, he can't play. What do you have? You have Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Steph Curry, Andre Iguodala, and who? Kevin Looney? This kid, Al McKinney? That's all you got? And you can't beat that team if you're the Houston Rockets that you're supposed to be? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Everybody's getting on James Harden because James Harden only took one shot in the last 10 minutes of that game five. You know who I blame? I blame CP3. You are the floor general. You're the general. It's your team. You win the show. Steve Kerr, because Steve Kerr says, load up on him, double, triple him, get the ball out of his hands. And the nearest dude that's near, the nearest to him is Clint Capella, who's no threat on the perimeter. So you, are you, are you trap him and attack him 30 feet away from the basket. He's got to get the ball out of his hands. And the person nearest to him is Clint Capella. What is he supposed to do? He gave the ball to Clint Capella. Why don't you have the ball in your hands, CP3? Why are you not running the show? Why are you not making sure that Clint Capella is out of the game or he's in the game but standing in a damn corner or on a block, that Eric Gordon is on one wing, that Austin Rivers is on another, or that P.J. Tucker is in the corner, the right or the left, because he can hit from either spot, and you take control. See, everybody's looking at CP3, and they're saying, well, he was 0 for 6 from three-point range in game five. That's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a CP3 that is a floor general extraordinaire, even though Father Time is catching up to him a little bit more than it was last year. And I'm saying, I'm sorry, CP3. I expect more from you. Get the damn ball and run the show and make sure you position James Harden to do something that Mike D'Antoni might be ill-equipped to do for all we know. That's your job. CP3 getting paid $35.6 million. I'm going to say it again. CP3 getting paid $35.6 million. CP3 is the highest paid player on the Houston Rockets this year. That ain't James Harden. He's at 30. CP3 is the one that just signed for four years, $160 million. First three games of this series, people looking at CP3 ready to, ready to do something to him because he won't shoot the damn ball enough. You shoot 47% from the field. How come you ain't shooting more? 
You shoot 38% for three-point range over the first two games. How come you shoot the ball more? What's up with the usage rate? Why has it died down? That ain't about Dan Tony. This is about you. You CP3. Figure it out. Enough of this, James Harden. James. Of course, James Harden does not get a pass. Of course, you got to hold him accountable to some degree. Of course, James Harden has to do what he needs to do. Nobody's denying that. But just as important as CP3, this is your moment. Ladies and gentlemen, CP3 is going to go in the Hall of Fame as one of the great point guards this game has ever seen. Do you know he's never played in an NBA Finals? Ever. Ever. Now, we understand that because when you were in New Orleans, you had to deal with Kobe and the Lakers. When you were with the Clippers, even though y'all blew that game six that you had to lead over Houston before going to the conference final, before losing uh, in the Western Conference semifinals, and Houston went to the conference finals against the Golden State Warriors, which started the Golden State Warriors run at a time when the Clippers were their biggest rival because of the way y'all would heatedly go at one another. Even though you blew that opportunity, for the most part, in other instances, you just weren't good enough as a team. We got that. There's no excuse now. There's no excuse now. CP3 has to step it up. He has to remind us of his greatness over these next two games. Because in the Golden State Warriors, in losing Kevin Durant, they lost the leading scorer in the entire playoffs, averaging 34.2 a game. Golden State can do a lot of things. They can move the ball better. They can spread the floor better. They can elevate their pacing. They can do all of those different things. They can share the basketball better. They ain't going to make up for Kevin Durant. This is the Rockets' chance. And if you don't get it done, oh, my God. I don't even want to think about what people are going to say about Harden and CP3 if they don't get it done after this. But when I look at Harden, okay, come to me when he's missing shots. Don't come to me and blame him for having to get the ball out of his hands because he's double or triple teamed. And nobody else is handling their responsibilities. That's CP3's job. That's your job. Ain't to score. Is to run the show and put people in the best position to win. That's CP3's job. And we will be watching. 888 say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. That was Straight Talk Wireless. Everything for less. Only at Walmart. We'll get to your calls in a minute at 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888 I can't wait. I just want the phone lines open for the rest of the damn entire show. Because I can't wait to talk to all of y'all about this. And remember, there's a lot more to get into. LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers and their coaches. Just, oh, I got a whole bunch of news to give y'all on that front. So don't go anywhere. You're listening live. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, when you're hiring, you don't want to waste time sorting through dozens of irrelevant resumes. You want an official way to get to a short list of qualified candidates. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screen of questions based on your job requirements, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. Discover why 3 million businesses use Indeed for hiring. Post a job today at Indeed.com slash hire. Search for greatness. Search Indeed. This show and all of ESPN is streaming live on the ESPN app.